<laughs> what do I say at the beginning of the episode? Oh, what's up everybody? This is Beast for Build. I'm Chris. We're back working on the E46. I am very inspired for unknown reasons. I've been watching some fun YouTube channels and some different people, uh, Colin Furs and, and other people just inspiring the shit out of me. I am super inspired and I'm super excited to be working on this car because we get to do some really fun stuff at this stage as well as like kind of solidify making sure the engine works and power steering and some other stuff like that. But uh, this is our purpose built fun car, purposely built just to have fun. So it's kind of fun to be able to just say, well, uh, should we do that? Is it going to be fun? Yes, it's going to be fun. Let's go ahead and do it. So I'm very excited. Uh, behind me is a list of a lot of stuff that we need to get done. And um, in this episode, I will be joined by Eric and Adrian, and we will have a lot of uh, help uh, from around, uh, well, just from those two, from around those two. Anyways, um, I'm excited. It's time to get to it. Uh, stay tuned. All right, first things first, I gotta go ahead and torque these bolts on the back of the diff down and reinstall our diff. It's gonna be a messy job and it's not a lot of fun, but it is definitely uh, high up on the priority list. So this is the first thing I'm gonna be tackling tonight. Um, and hopefully I can just get that out of the way so we can move on to some fun stuff. All right guys, the diff is in. Uh, it took about three hours, which is insane. But, oh well, sometimes things just take time. I, I think I only got like half as dirty this time. Uh, let me see if I can show you guys uh, now our new diff action. Okay, you can see this tire right here out of the corner of the screen and you'll see that one over there. And when we spin backwards, they're both going backwards. And we spin forwards. They're both going forwards. Locked diff magic. All right, well, the next thing I got to do is not going to be super fun. The power steering pump is leaking because of the hack job I did on it um, for the to replace that connector. Uh, that was my bad, so I got to jump under there and pull that off. But on the ground, there's a bunch of fluid, uh, uh, radiator fluid, and um, power steering fluid. So that's not going to be super fun to be working down there, but I'm going to get that off, bring the thing over to the bench, and then we are going to JB weld a connector on there. All right, we got to pump off the car here. You can uh, see it's got um, the power steering fluid around it. So we got to pull this piece off that I put on there and clean this whole area, uh, particularly this part, um, so we can JB weld it on. We are, we are dreaming in the dark. We are nothing more than dust. Search for you, stay lost. We are. Okay, here's what it ended up looking like in the end. Uh, just went around, it's a nice little, it's not really a bead, but whatever it is. So we could have welded this, but Eric said that this type of cast aluminum is really porous and it can be really, it can have really bad results with welding, so we might as well use JB Weld. And I think JB Weld in this, uh, for the sake, so it's threaded in there, but the threads just weren't watertight. So the JB Weld is just to hold back the little leak. And uh, in this, for this use case, I think it's actually going to end up really good. All right, guys. So you might remember in the beginning of the episode where I decided I was going to do whatever the fuck I wanted with this car. Um, I was talking with Adrian yesterday, and he was talking to somebody that actually did this event. Um, and the only point of failure that he had on his car was um, they gouged their oil pan and damaged it, and that's how they were out of the event. So our oil pan has a small skid plate over it, which is okay, but then. Eric and I were talking about this radiator being right here and that's kind of like our front like point of impact. But then we thought, okay, if we have no trunk lid and I kind of want to build some interesting stuff over the back trunk area anyways, like kind of like trunk louvers that are going to jam air down in there, we are like, what if we did a rear mounted radiator? I've never done it. Eric, you've never done this. No. But this is exactly the car to try and figure this out and in BS for Build style, we're like, how hard can it be? So we got 20 foot of PVC tubing, we're going to run from our the, the original inlet and outlet. We're gonna adapt to PVC, we're gonna punch through the firewall, run down the passenger side of the car, uh, cabin, and into the back, and plumb our radiator into the trunk. Because it'll be fun, and 
then we're gonna be really bulletproof on this front end. I can mob down the gravel roads and everything really hardcore and we won't break anything because there won't be anything there to break. So uh, we're just gonna get started. We got a lot of work to do. We just added a lot more work onto our um, schedule, but we're both, I think, really excited to try this out. So we're just gonna get started. Daytime. So we got our two pipes running from the front. We have our inlet and our outlet, and they both pair up right here. They run back, they jet through this little section right here, and they come down and shoot down in through our firewall. I'll walk you around. We've ripped up a little bit of the carpeting, and then they, they meet up down there. Some 45s run back along the floorboards, which we'll be able to cover most of this stuff up with the carpet. Won't be in our way. And we're in the process of plumbing uh, back over the back seat hump and back to our radiator. Now let me show you the radiator. Eric's over here working on a stainless steel fan shroud that's then going to mount onto our rear mounted radiator. This with some light, which we have welded a support bar back there and there, and then these supports up here. So this thing is like rock solid mounted on there. And we're in the process of getting our radiator fan on there. So we should be only a couple hours away from testing this thing out. All right guys, well we are fully uh, wired up here. We ditched the DIY uh, fan shroud, grabbed a smaller fan that we had from laying around in the shop. It was a little bit easier to install, so we just threw that on there. Um, all of our pipes are ran, we just need to cement them in. So I showed you guys up front earlier. And they run down around the kick plate, going down, and then they come to this. They'll go down parallel once we bracket them together and then they do a split and go back to our radiator back there. So these just need to, all the fittings just need to be cemented and then we can fill the system with fluid and then while we're doing that I'm going to reinstall the power steering pump and then we'll kick it on and give it a try. Alright guys, well this is going great. Uh, Eric and I are going to fill up the um, entire coolant system. We got a bit of a different strategy. We have completely ran out of time for tonight. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill up the uh, coolant system and then we're going to come back tomorrow and just look and see if we've had any leaks and that'll be step one. And then in the morning I'll reinstall the power steering pump to give it a test. Good morning. I'd like to welcome you back to PS for Plumbing. We've sprung a leak. Uh, last night when we were refilling the system, or we were filling it for the first time, we sprung a leak. That's why there's a little bit of water by my feet. No big deal. Uh, we knew about it, but we had to jet from the shop. It was just too late. So today we're going to redo the leak. It might have been a little advantageous of us thinking that we were going to be able to build a whole rear mounted radiator for like a $20 budget in one afternoon um, because we aren't professional plumbers. But we have all the pipes ran, we have the electrical fan uh, wired up, we have the temperature gauges all in the right spot. So we are really in a good spot. I'm just gonna plug this leak and then refill the system. And then we can just get back on track on, on working on some more of the other stuff. <laughs> so this is, uh, this is really, really fun and this is a really, really cool thing to do. I'm super glad that we had uh, a reason to do this. Um, again, if you guys forgot, it's not for drifting, it's for the fact that we didn't want the radiator being the lowest thing hanging on the front of our car uh, for when there's a lot of big rocky gravel um, trucking roads and stuff that this event is on. And when we talked to a guy, I've already told you this, I'm sorry, I'm repeating myself, but we talked to a guy and the thing that made his car fail was basically debris on the road, jammed the hole in his oil pan. So we just wanted to uh, have more protection for our front end to protect it. So hopefully we can make it through the whole 500 miles of the event. <clears throat> Plus it's fucking awesome to have a rear mounted radiator. So um, we're stoked. Uh, I'm gonna plug that leak right now and then we're gonna refill the system and then hopefully it won't keep leaking and I can move on to um, things like the power steering pump and some other stuff. All right guys, I got the shop moderately cleaned up and uh, the guys are on the way down. I got Eric and Adrian coming in to help me out. Um, so I'm really excited and it's time to start cranking on this and I'm gonna go throw in that power steering pump. But uh, first, I wanna go over the finances. It's really important. This car wouldn't be challenging if it wasn't on the budget. So 
Um, we've sold a lot of things on the Panjo Marketplace. I want to thank Panjo for sponsoring this episode. There are links in the description. Um, you can get $10 off your first purchase on Panjo, and uh, you can see my store. It's in the description, my Marketplace on there. And uh, there's still a lot of stuff off this car that's going on there, but um, I'm going to read all this stuff off as fast as I can, and then we'll come to a total. So we got trim $10, visor $20, visor $20, door, floor mat $10, floor mat $10, mirror trim $10, mirror trim $10, fender trim $20, two pieces, emblem $20, emblem $20, wheel caps $40 total, emblem $20, dash tray $20, tool flap $20, ash tray $10, kick plate $20, kick plate $20, armor center console $80, dash trim $20. All those are signed, uh, uh, sold on the Panjo Marketplace for a total of, I forgot to total it, I'll be right back. All right, that, that all totaled out to $400, and that's not even all the stuff that's yet to be sold. There's more stuff to go out on Panjo, and I've got more stuff, just side conversations with going people with Facebook and email. If you guys want something on the car, you still see it on here, hit me up at email, please, Chris Abuse for Build, and I'll hook you up. But we originally bought the car for $800. Um, the rule is you have to have a $500 or less car. Uh, we bought the car for $800, and we needed to buy um, some parts. Parts to repair it uh, came out to $135, which makes it a $935 car. We sold the rear bumper and the trunk lid for $325 total. We made another $400 on Panjo parts thus far. That adds up to $725. So I think this is a $200 car right now. So yeah, we got enough budget for the hydro e-brake and we definitely don't have to worry about paying for plumbing for our rear mounted radiator. The hydro e-brake is $50 and the plumbing for the rear mount, we're only $20 shot on that. So uh, we're doing just fine um, on budget and uh, it's time to keep working on the car and I think that's got a little bit more budget for some other cool stuff which I'll show you this week. All right, so I just threw a tiny, the tiny, tiniest bit of RTV around this uh, quick connect because if it's leaking, I don't know what else to do really. It might not be the best way to do that, but if, you know, it's BMW's part, so if it malfunctions, that was the best way I knew how to do it. So that has completely stopped the leak, we're good. And I tightened down all the rest of the hose clamps. Next thing, I'm gonna move over to the doors because we're gonna pull the door panels off. Eventually they'll be sold, they haven't been sold yet. But, uh, and then part of the door is the door handle, so we're gonna make our own little door poles so we can open the doors easily without having the door panel there. Alright guys, luckily enough we found a little bit of gold hiding in these doors. So our airbags are not deployed. Since I have no idea what's going on with the airbag system on this car already, I'm just going to pull them off. And uh, airbags are worth quite a bit of money, so uh, these will also be up for sale. We have our side door airbags, we have two of them that are not deployed, so it's awesome. Alright guys, so the last piece of this puzzle to get this door ready, besides figuring out how we're going to mount speakers, which doesn't really matter, is uh, figuring out how to do a door pull. So previously the ha handle went into this. When you pull the handle, it would pull this metal piece out of here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill a self-tapping screw through this plastic piece into the door frame right here where it's pretty natural. And then we're gonna uh, grab something to make a handle right here so we can pull on it. All right, we got our little mechanism finished. We ended up going a zip tie around the shaft of it with another zip tie coming out of it. Well, zip tie around the cable of it and another coming out because it's got a teed end, so that blocks it off. And then we got our little beast for build key tag handle, which I'm gonna, anyways. So you're like, ah, car's on fire, rear mount radiator, bad idea, get out. And then you go, ah, pop, and the door opens. Genius. All right, well, Eric's in the back working on the hard stuff. He's finishing up the plumbing, doing a couple little hose clamps for our rear mounted radiator. I'm gonna work on some uh, decals for this event. We gotta rep the sponsors. All right, that was a lot of fun playing with decals. If you guys want to find any BS for Build decals for yourself, if you, especially if you want to find them in your mailbox, you should uh, go to bsforbuild.com and scroll down to the shop, pick some up there. All right, guys, it's time to kick this thing on and test our cooling system.
We were heating up the system to test it and we thought everything was fine. It blew this end off. It drenched my charger. Oh my god. With really hot water. Okay, back to the drawing board on pressurizing this thing. Alright, uh, we did a little research and we think that it was just that this hose clamp wasn't really on tight enough and since it's clamping to PVC and it has no like flared end, it's a little bit easy to come off. But after feeling how the tubes feel, it seems like the system was actually working. So uh, we're going to kick it back on now that it's hot and just keep it running and keep testing it. Alright guys, well we ran into a pretty serious problem. Uh, you can see that this hose is like a little bit bent now from the heat and uh, that like when we went to lunch we started thinking like oh what like we thought that the maximum heat temperature for PVC would be plenty hot enough to work on a car. Turns out it's not. It's like about 120 degrees and you can you can stress it and uh, but we don't really want to risk it because we don't want to blow hot water all over ourselves. So it's time to redo the cooling system. Taking what we've learned we bought some adapters and we're going to adapt down from the natural pipe size down to this and this is heater hose that uh, we got down at just the hardware store. It runs up to 220 degrees so we should be okay there and uh, we're going to replace all this PVC with the heater hose and run straight back um, to our rear mount. Uh, worth noting the system operated perfectly once once we um, clamped this down a little bit harder the system operated really good um, so we decided not to bail on the idea altogether because we still really want to do it and we're just going to run this heater pipe so was about 20 bucks in PVC off of our budget. Obviously if we're not using it on the car it doesn't have to come out of our budget. So we get that 20 bucks back, we're gonna rip this off, throw it away, and then this pipe cost us $50 for the, we got two packages of it. So 50 bucks and about five bucks, well actually about 10 bucks in connectors, and we're back. So uh, 60 bucks worth of uh, cooling pipe and then we're back in the game. So uh, that's what we're gonna do now. We're just gonna replace all the piping with this stuff. Set a rear mount of radiator take two. So here's what we got. We have a reducer in our top valve coming around. Our lower one, they both run clamp to this part right here, go down through our firewall where our last one went. Then we have them kind of temporarily just like laid down here along our floor rail, kick plate rail idea place. And then they go back same way they went last time to our radiator system. Uh, we have added more gas to the car because you guys don't know this but it was running out and we have done an ingenious exhaust exit route so we were not going to die back here. Now it's time to kick it on and give it a try. Alright guys, well we ran into a small problem. Uh, we we're pressurizing the system and trying to bleed the air bubbles out and the radiator blew a hole in the bottom and that's what you get when you buy a cheapo radiator from a junkyard. So. Um, next episode, uh, our midweek episode, we're gonna go straight back to the same junkyard and buy another cheapo radiator. Hopefully this one won't explode on us. I'm sorry to end the episode on a bit of a failure, but uh, you know, sometimes that's just how the cookie crumbles. I think this is coming together really cool and it looks really cool, so we, we really wanna make this thing happen. Um, so far, everything is working totally as planned. It's just that the radiator blew a hole in it. Um, I think that's about it. You can find us at uh, facebook.com slash bsforbuild and we're bsforbuild on Instagram and you can find us at bsforbuild.com. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you want to buy any of our merch, our hats, or our new door handles, or anything like that, um, head over to uh, bsforbuild.com, scroll down to the shop. All the merch, all the proceeds from merch go straight into our builds. I want to thank you to Panjo to uh, sponsor this episode. Panjo's rad. Check it out. Links are in the description. And uh, I think that's about it. Thank you guys very much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. Peace.